In this video, I want to talk about how to look at paintings. I'm Tara Wahab and this is my Star Witch Show. I'm making these videos spontaneously and today I was just preparing some of my paintings for an, um, an event that uh, they will be presented at. And I thought I may as well make a video and talk about these paintings and some of the ways you can interpret uh, paintings when you're looking at them. So, here's the first painting. It's uh, relatively a large painting. Um, so, what should you be looking at when you're looking at a painting? You know, is the title important? Is the sizes important? Um, is it the colors? Is it what you see in it? Uh, is it how makes you feel like that is important? Um, it's actually all of those. Uh, this particular piece is called uh, Broken Mind. Um, now, by just giving you the title, it already gives you some clue about what it is about. Now, it's a very interesting that, um, you know, when um, we are born, before we learn how to make any movements or speak or even learn how to um, say one word, uh, we are communicating with the world around us through our eyes. There is a lot of visual communication that is happening. So um, that's, that's pretty much becomes the primary way that we see things. But as we start growing up, um, that becomes a little bit less and less and less because we start to just um, become very good at just identifying objects. This is a tree, that's a flower, um, that's a car, that's a person. We don't get into too much details about things. But uh, when you are painting things, when you are drawing things, you go into lots of details. What kind of tree am I looking at? Even when we're imagining things, it's important to know what we are exactly uh, trying to convey. For me personally, as an artist, it's very important that I am conveying a message through my artwork. Uh, it's almost impossible to just, even if it's an abstract artwork, uh, it's almost impossible to not have any meaning behind the work. You know, some artists um, make their works as untitled, so they don't even title them, because um, that would give the viewer a little bit more um, kind of an open interpretation. They can interpret that as whatever that they want. But generally, I think there is a conversation that is happening between um, the viewer and the artist who has created uh, the work of art and um, most importantly uh, when any work of art is being presented at a museum or a gallery um, the artist is not beside the work at all times so it's important that the message is still there and it's not going to get lost and when a viewer is looking at a painting or any work of art they know what they are looking at at least have some clues and ideas. So of course, title makes um, a very good um, element that helps people to understand what they should be looking at when they're looking at a painting. Now, as I said, it calls broken mind, so I am definitely talking about mind here. And um, this particular piece actually was made from a uh, still life that was handmade. I literally put together a still life from some of my personal objects and some part of it was made from cardboard and, um, and half of the painting is actually that still life however that I um, composed them together and the other half of the painting is that same still life but smashed plus I turned the painting upside down, so I changed the ori orientation of the painting as well. The other thing about this painting is that that half of it, which was uh, representing the actual still life, is having a white background, and the smashed part is having a black background. But there are still some elements that are repeating in both halves of the painting. Uh, such as those yellow, blue, and red dot is happening um, on the other half of the painting as well. 
And so other things that you will be looking at, so that's part of the composition of the painting. We are reading uh, paintings through forms, shapes, and um, colors, as well as brush strokes, um, how paint or any medium has been applied, and uh, what intensity it is. I also really like the tactility of uh, paint as well. Like I really like to make things that it's not necessarily like a smooth uh, surface. Something that people want to actually come and touch it or experience it. For me, work of art is is an experience. What what is this piece about actually? Broken mind, and why it is broken? Obviously, I talked to you about the process of the painting. It was smashed. The other thing that I'm trying to convey through this uh, piece by calling it Broken Mind is, is the way that we find logical ways through illogical things or vice versa when we are trying to find logic in illogical ways. For example, uh, everybody has a logic and it doesn't matter whether we understand them or not. Um, I used to even work with, with clients who were dealing with a uh, lot of different mental health uh, issues and even with even when they're dealing with that kind of you know uh, uh, challenges with mental challenges uh, when you're asking them why did you do so and so their answer is because because this and this and this they always use the word because so in their head in their mind, they, they had the logic of some sort of using or doing for whatever action that they took. It was a logic behind it. So even the logic might have seemed to me a, of a very weak logic, it still had a meaning. Um, and so that's why I call this broken mind, because when, when your uh, mind is out of balance, you start um, creating logics that are not that's strong enough and we always have all these rules that we create for ourselves and um, that's pretty much what I'm trying to light you know just shine some light on with with this painting and of course uh, also this painting has a lot of um, kind of earthy tones colors with that cardboard that I use it uh, it talks more about simplicity and the other thing with the usage of the primary colors, the, the red, yellow, and blue, they are also representing different things. Um, to me as an artist, I, I really like the you know, usage of the meanings of colors in the work of art. Although like, there, there's always a meaning there, but um, most of the times we don't take the time to actually go through each meaning of every element that we see in um, anything, not necessarily just work of art. Um, for me, uh, red represents body, anything that is solid, um, the, the yellow represents mind, anything that is related to um, uh, mental energy and thinking and um, uh, coming up with solutions. And uh, blue is uh, representing spirit and our soul and everything that uh, gives us hope and trust in what we do. And so even though it is broken, it contains that solid mind, body, and spirit in both um, half of this painting. Um, does the size matter of the painting? Of course, <laughs> size always matters. Um, uh, I personally really like to make uh, larger pieces, but as you see, there's always uh, the you know, issue of uh, how you can fit it in different spaces, especially if you are um, living uh, in a limited space, uh, that, that could be uh, an issue. Um, I then prefer to just paint murals, so uh, it's large enough, but you don't have to carry it around and it just stays there. So that's, that's a good way of painting large paintings as well, um, or murals. Um, I actually have this book here that I'm going to introduce you to what calls the value of art. It's a great book if you are an artist or a, you're into art and you want to learn more uh, by Michael Finlay. This is a great book and he actually um, uh, 
gives a very great suggestion about when you are looking at um, artworks. He says that um, it's best to spend about 10 minutes looking at artworks um, when you're going to a gallery or a museum. Just pick one or two paintings and looking at them and not spending your time looking at everything that is available at, at that gallery or museum. Which is, um, I, I actually strongly agree with it because um, years ago I, I had the opportunity to uh, go to a residency at the Hermitage Museum and uh, study the paintings and sculptures there for about two weeks and at the end of that uh, period well, we were exhibiting our artworks as well and while we were working or while we were studying um, at the museum I was observing other uh, tourists that would come to look at the um, works in the museum and it was interesting to see that they wouldn't even take time to look at anything. They would literally just um, take a picture of everything. Now I'm not sure how many of you or uh, how many people actually go home you know, after they um, are done um, from their trip, look at all the images and pictures that they took, but even looking at an image is not the same experience than standing in front of the work and studying it and looking at it. And, uh, and I think that's kind of a missing opportunity when people take too many pictures and they just miss out on the whole experience of looking at art. Uh, but I also understand that when, especially when they are going in the tour and uh, you know the other, with other tourists, um, uh, their schedule is pretty full and like they're just running with different activities and visiting a museum is literally just a visiting a museum and it's just one of many other activities that they are fitting into their schedule on that day so they don't have that much time to actually look at a painting but it's um, it's very interesting uh, that um, you know um, in this book he says that to spend about 10 minutes at least to look at an artwork because other than you know the other things you see in it it's also just studying how does it make you feel like really after spending like a few minutes in front of it um, works of art are they are reflecting the artist's uh, energy and, uh, and how what they even were feeling like when they were ma making this painting and it's about uh, that creation and, and and really that experience of it um, and you know it's very important that we learn how to read visual cues other than like learning how to read books we are reading in linear ways and we are um, saying words we don't memorize each word we just grasp the overall knowledge and information that was given to us when you, you are looking at a painting this is a different kind of you know information that you're receiving through image through um, colors forms and shapes and the composition that has put them together. Each of these elements by themselves, like separately, they could have a separate meaning, but when they're put together, it paints you a story. And in fact, that's what an artist wants to convey most of the times, the story of the painting. So this is this painting. I'm going to move, uh, move on to the next painting. This is my next painting that I'm preparing for this. Uh, upcoming event it calls the new land and it is about um, immigration so I have immigrated about three times in my life and um, every time that you immigrate um, it takes some time to get used to everything and uh, to fit in uh, the new culture the new place and um, just adapting to everything around you all over again. And so I uh, painted this painting when I was surrounded by lots of other immigrants and they were feeling all like very homesick all the time and, and I felt um, that maybe I should paint a picture of that and uh, show how does it look like or how does it feel like when you are in a new place and you have um, just, um, you know, so out of 
you're in a new place but also very out of place all the time and so hence yeah it's a piece of ice yeah it feels cold um, now uh, I am living in a colder <laughs> place but it's not necessarily uh, you know about that but just overall feeling um, it's it's cold that um, you know trying to um, find connection with new people with the in new um, homeland now uh, it's not always that easy so I'm kind of representing that you know most of the things that you see in a painting is also very metaphorical so it's a metaphor for me that I'm using it as um, you know ice it's been cold and um, and I used uh, well the dolphin looking kind of creature that you don't really know whether it is a dolphin or it's some it's some sort of um, um, fish but you can't really tell what kind it is so I, I was kind of aiming for something that is in between uh, a fish or a dolphin or is it a baby dolphin like kind I want to, I want it to be ambiguous I want that ambiguity in in this particular uh, character that uh, is just laying on the piece of ice and also yeah usage of dolphin because I think dolphins are uh, intelligent um, animals and um, most immigrants uh, tend to become more intelligent because um, it takes a lot of work to um, just adapt to a new place, learning a new language every time. Uh, whereas like those people who were born and raised in the same place or who were stayed in the same city for example for their whole entire life, uh, they never had to, you know, there was not... Um, it's also, yes, we are reluctant to learn something new, but we are also adaptable enough to um, just be flexible with things and adjust. Whereas um, those people who don't immigrate as often, they don't have to, right? And because there is no need for it, they also don't, they don't push any boundaries. Uh, they don't really go further beyond their comfort zone, maybe. And so for me, yes, that's why I used dolphin particularly, or some creature that is kind of dolphin looking um, and is something in between things but it's still new it's still growing it still doesn't know where he is or where she is and um, yeah it's a new land and I also use like a usage of different colors um, of again the primary colors are everywhere uh, but this time I was going for different nationalities that we see in and in a new um, uh, place that we immigrate, for example, there are people from all kinds of different places. So that's kind of in the background. We get to see people from all uh, different countries, and this is and it's it's great to have that uh, variety and multiculturalism um, around you. And yes, it is supposed to have a little bit of a sad mood. Uh, but overall, I really like this painting, um, although it is kind of simple. Um, it's made of oil paint and uh, acrylic as well. Um, I might change some of the things that are happening in the water. I'm not very happy with that. Um, but yeah, these are some of the things that I should probably work on and um, see how, how I can make it more interesting. Also, the other thing that I really like to incorporate into my paintings is the, uh, you know, asking myself the question, is it visually stimulating enough or not? I want people to like it when they're looking at it. I want them to uh, be attracted to it. And um, that's what is essentially welcoming them to um, go in front of it and spend some time to look at it. Because if it's um, if it's too way too moody or scary or gross looking, yes, that's also it's going to attract them, but um, not necessarily in a positive way. So again, for me, it's very important that the viewer has a um, a positive experience when they are looking at my pieces. So let's move on to my next piece that I am preparing. So here's my next piece, uh, this one is called Birth Canal and it is about the idea of every moment is um, a new moment and we are being 
reborn with every moment that we experience. And of course I want to put the focus on the light. And yes, it's a very simple painting, it's abstract and my intention is literally just for you to look at the light and focusing on the positive, which is the light and that is surrounded by all the darkness. So, um, although, you know, even though when an artist is a, uh, has an idea or trying to uh, convey a message through their artwork, um, it's always still open to the interpretation of the viewer themselves too. So people may have a different experience looking at this piece uh, simply because uh, they have different memories and they have different experiences and they might relate things or might relate to different um, visuals differently simply because of the previous experience that they had. They might feel differently about it, they might see it differently and uh, that's still great and that's one of the reasons why I think we all should have lots of paintings around us and like real paintings and I know yes it's going to be a little pricey but um, for me I'm actually donating these pieces so I don't think that um, there, people are unable to afford paying or buying um, real paintings uh, it's more of whether or not they understand or appreciate it. It's just like books. Um, yes, you can purchase digital books, but I still very much prefer to have the actual hard copy, you know, of every book and just collecting the books itself is um, interesting for me. Anyhow, um, I have another painting that I wanted to talk about, but I think uh, this video is already long maybe I'll talk about my other paintings in my other videos uh, let me know um, if you like this video uh, feel free to share your thoughts um, give me a thumbs up um, subscribe share uh, comment on the videos and yeah let me know how do I do and uh, other than that thanks for watching <laughs>